Hello and welcome back to Hemophyte Breakdowns. Today we're going to get a little bit of a double feature off of another viewer uh, video. And I want to talk about Rapier, which is a weapon I haven't talked about yet. Um, specifically, this is from a tournament that I was at. I'm just over there. Uh, but this is a unique interaction that you don't often see. And this is pretty much the only time that I will talk about something like cross-weapon fighting. Just because it's sort of not cross-weapon fighting. But basically, as you can probably already see, this is Rapier and Dagger versus Single Rapier. And normally... I would say this matchup is an absolute shit show. Having two devices, whether they be weapons or not, against a person with only one weapon is a, an almost insurmountable uphill battle. You, as the person with the dagger, have the ability to dedicate it entirely to defense while holding your rapier back for whenever that defense holds. You can simply reach out with your dagger hand and push the opponent's uh, weapon off to the absolute floor, the side, the air, anywhere. As long as it maintains that bind, there's absolutely nothing they can do to defend themselves from the other weapon. It's a terrible situation. But this was an interesting exchange. So what we see is a very typical, um, I guess, modus operandi that you would see in a rapier dagger situation. The person with the dagger deflects with the dagger, as they necessarily should. Once they are free and they have the sword off into the space, they start attacking with the rapier. This person manages to deflect that responding uh, thrust with their own rapier that was just not quite pushed all the way out far enough that it couldn't come back. But what's important to know is that the defense of the dagger isn't impenetrable. It's very, very good at deflecting thrusts with a windshield wiper style motion, either up and down. But what it is significantly weaker at is defending against cuts. And that is because the windshield wiper, which you see is attemptedly employed here, has very interesting bind presence with a dagger. Uh, it's something that's been talked about before, but generally with weapons, there's basically a, a good leverage point and a bad leverage point, often described as the strong and the weak, respectively. And daggers, in a way, are all strong in the sense that they really don't have a poor leverage point due to how short they are. But they do have an issue in that when you first apply your uh, leverage, often the weight or the lack of weight of your dagger will struggle against the weight of someone else's main weapon. And sometimes you get a situation like this where you're attempting to do a parry that really should be quite routine. But because it's coming in at this rate where I know you can't really see it, but uh, the dagger goes up to try to defend and it has trouble putting a traditional sort of hanging parry guard up that would prevent this sword from getting through to the target. And just for a little bit of posterity, I'm also going to show what this matchup typically looks like and really what it should look like if you're the one with the rapier dagger in this situation. As you can see from that exchange, the ability of the dagger to do, or the rapier and dagger to do two things simultaneously is in most cases, if done intelligently, insurmountable. So as you can see here, there is a point that is somewhat online, perhaps could have reached the shoulder, but it's pushed off to the side with the flat of the dagger at the exact same time as the thrust is coming in here. And there's really not a single thing that could have been done better on the part of the single rapier fighter to survive. Maybe they could have desperately used their offhand as a kind of parrying dagger to just swipe that out of the way. But given the trajectory of how it was coming in, that would have been pretty difficult. And this is this is what you need to be doing anytime you're fencing rapier and dagger, even if it's against another person with rapier and dagger. You always need to be making sure that your defensive weapon is matched up against their offensive weapon and vice versa. And that way, if you can reliably defend yourself with the dagger and put their offensive weapon into a spot where it cannot harm you, that is the situation where you now have your opportunity to make your attack. And once their weapon is off in the way, you know that no afterblow is coming because you have the ability to stop it at the exact same time as you attack. So unlike with something like longsword or any other single-handed weapon, rapier and dagger or really sword and buckler or any two paired item fighting 
is a situation in which the defensive weapon can be used to prevent your afterblows and keep you safe, while your offensive weapon is free to do all of the crazy, you know, uh, confusing and hard to defend stuff that it can do. Because you no longer have to do what Longsword and Saber has to do, which is land a cut and then immediately move into a defensive position or defensible mindset instantly because that afterblow is always capable of coming whenever you land something. All right, that's going to be everything. If you want to have your video featured on the channel, simply send me the video to hemafightbreakdowns at gmail.com. And I hope to see you next time.